joined by our senior counsel for global affairs, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And Secretary Pompeo has got a new piece up at ACLJ.org. We're seeing these unprecedented energy costs rising in Europe. Uh, you tweeted out yesterday, Secretary Pompeo, the energy crisis in Europe is a warning for us. The policies that gave Putin leverage over Europe are the same energy policies that Democrats are pushing here. I mean, it seems like the Biden administration is following the European playbook, which means if they do, Secretary Pompeo, that Americans better brace themselves for very high energy costs. Jordan, I actually just got back from Europe. They are paying today about 10 times what the average American is paying to heat their home uh, in the winter or cool their home in the summer. Uh, we're on the cusp of heading down that same path. When you shut down the capacity to produce American energy, simple things like fracking, uh, to be able to mine environmentally friendly ways. This is what Europe has done for 10 years. They walked away from nuclear power. They walked away from coal power. And they had no solution, no solution to make sure that affordable energy was available for workers to manufacture and for families to do the simple things like drive the car and take the kids to soccer practice or to church. Uh, we're headed that same way. God bless. I saw Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister Trust today said she was going to allow fracking in the United Kingdom. I think that's a great solution, right? First, help yourself. I wish Governor Hochul in New York would do the same thing, and I wish the Biden administration would stop pushing these woke ESG policies that are denying us the very energy that allowed, has allowed America to be so prosperous for so many years. You know, Mike, one of the things that's, that's so ironic as, you know, California is putting this huge push for electronic vehicles. And, you know, they say they don't want to have, you know, uh, gas-controlled vehicles in the next uh, 10 years. They want the sales to stop. They want electric vehicles as the not only primary but as really the only um, method of transportation. Meanwhile, they're calling for energy conservation, electric energy conservation, saying the grids are over overwork right now, and they're having uh, rolling brownouts and blackouts. So you, you, they have on one hand they have this you know push on the the green energy, what they call green energy situation, the electrical uh, electrical vi electric vehicles, and then on the other hand they're saying basically you can't use them because we don't have the energy to, for you to power them up. Jay, I'd laugh if it wasn't so no. sad. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, it's truly incomprehensible that, that political decision makers tied to this climate change faith, we can all do data and facts. We should all go work to make sure that our environment is safe and our water's clean and our air is safe. Those are good things. Uh, we've been good stewards of the land in places like Kansas where farmers work. But to walk away from the lifeblood that provide food security for America, affordable energy for families, uh, natural gas so that manufacturing in America can stay here and not go someplace else. Those are the things that we've just stepped away from. And California has always led the way in this regard. When they set rules on energy, often the rest of the nation follows. And we can see what this is going to mean to ordinary Californians who are simply trying to live their lives and take care of their families. They're going to be told to buy unaffordable cars and then told not to use them. You've got a new piece up at ACLJ.org on crisis at our southern border, too, and, and there's a lot of reporting on just the, the drug crisis in the United States as well. But, uh, you know, Joe Biden, we've seen his South presidency 20 months, and the crisis keeps growing, but we're, we're told that, uh, you know, there's no issue there, and, and they, there's so much distraction. Uh, is that what it's all about? You think that, like, this is like post-midterm, suddenly they have this, uh, you know, come-to-Jesus moment on the border, uh, Secretary Pompeo, or is it just that the liberals in the, po in the party – will not allow uh, for real actions to secure our border, to protect Americans right right from the top from this uh, the, the, the drug, uh, the, the fentanyl that we're seeing all across the country affecting every, every aspect of life, uh, rich and poor and everyone in between. Jordan, my sense is that the Democrat Party has been largely taken over on this issue by the hard progressive open borders left, who truly believe in their heart of hearts that it is somehow inconsistent with American tradition to have secure borders. We all know it's not. We all know that lawful immigration has been the lifeblood of our country, but allowing now hundreds of thousands a month to come across our border in a way that we have no idea who they are, what they're bringing, what their history has meant will mean bad things for America. We've talked about fentanyl coming across. We know that the risk of people on the terror watch list coming across increases as the days go by. This will end badly. We have an obligation, indeed, a responsibility to secure our borders. We don't have to go to root causes. The vice president always talks about going back to root causes. We know how to slow illegal immigration to a trickle. We did it for four years. I pray that this administration will get the, the cooler heads inside the Democrat Party will prevail. They will come to understand that preserving our southern border, protecting America from the threat of massive illegal immigration 
will come to be something that they can stand up for and defend. And then we can make sure that we get our workforce issues right. Uh, Mr. Secretary, in our next segment, we're going to be joined by Jeff Balaban, who's senior counsel for the ACLJ, runs our office in Jerusalem. And um, he's he's over there, and he's having to do some reassurance uh, to leaders, especially in Judea and Samaria, uh, as to the United States, that most Americans are standing with Israel despite the rhetoric that's coming out of the White House. But I, I've got to turn the attention of the, to the Middle East right to Iran, where you've got a very united Israel, a very united Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Gulf states, and a very cons- uh, serious concern about that we're about to enter into a deal that makes absolutely no sense. How serious is it, and what are you hearing as to the uh, likely timetable uh, on the Iran nuclear deal? We're getting word from our folks in the region. It could be within. It could be announced within weeks. Uh, Jay, it does look like they're getting close to giving up on things that matter to America. They're going to provide hundreds of millions of dollars to the Iranian terrorists who will only use it to put at risk the nation of Israel, and of course, us here at home in America as well. Uh, it's interesting when you look at the lineup, you laid it out, right? Israel, along with the Sunni Arab states, are all against this deal. The Russians and the Chinese, uh, the European powers are for it. Um, we should walk away. We should make sure that Iran never gets a nuclear weapon and doesn't have the money to put Israel and America in harm's way and continue to terrorize these regions and use extortion to get it, get what it is that Iran wants. It's not in America's interest. You know, you, obviously, with your background, you served not only as our Secretary of State, you also served as the director of this uh, Central Intelligence Agency. Uh, we often say that Iran is the largest exporter of terrorism in the world, which they clearly are. So I try to figure out what in the world, other than protecting the Barack Obama legacy, would this administration be pushing this deal, which makes no sense to anybody? Uh, why would they be doing it? It is the idea that uh, there's this moral equivalence uh, amongst the world. And why should we penalize the Iranians uh, as against the Sunni Arab states that we need this balance? It is fraught with error. It will create the risk of uh, more countries becoming nuclear weapon states. It, it is bad for the United States. And don't forget that money, none of that money that the Iranians are given as a result of sanctions relief. If we sign up for this silly deal, none of that money will go to ordinary Iranians. It will all go to the kleptocrats that are part of the Iranian leadership. And it will be used for malign purposes. Uh, Israel will be more at risk, and so will we here at home. You know, f- final question for you, Secretary Pompeo, to switch to China, because the UN finally put out a report detailing that the humanitarian crimes against the, the Uyghurs in China. Do you think it's too little, too late, though, at this point, to, for the world to impact uh, the decision making of the Chinese Communist Party when it comes to as as your administration, as when you were Secretary of State? recognize the genocide. The Biden administration has continued to recognize that genocide. It's never too late, Jordan, to do the right thing by people all across the world. The simple work of Nations Uniting to declare what the Chinese are doing is genocidal. The attempt to destroy an ethnicity is something that is so horrific, so monumental that it's never too late. Uh, The Biden administration has had the right language. I pray that they will find the right deeds to actually convince Xi Jinping that he needs to change his ways there in Western China. Yeah, it's always great to have you, Secretary Pompeo, and part of the team at the ACLJ as our Senior Counsel for Global Affairs. And let me encourage you folks to check out uh, his new piece up at ACLJ.org as well. Uh, that's the Biden administration must acknowledge the crisis on our southern border.